my role models growing up was, was my mom, my aunt, my grandma, my sisters. That's who I wanted to be like. Nobody was helping us. Everybody was like saying, no, no, this is not gonna happen. It's a sound that people would never understand. That no that people kept giving us was the biggest motivation to succeed, I think, that Emilio and I ever had. Oh, yeah, let's see him rap. And then after the rap, they were like, whoa, oh boy. You know, he's too Latin for hip hop, he's too hip hop for Latin, he's too English, he's too Spanish, he's too white, he's too this, he's too that. I was just more weirdly in between. You just immediately see, like, their polite face. Yes, we're gonna sit through this audition, but we're never calling you back. You could be my Latino Lawrence Olivier if you work on your tongue twisters, because I used to talk like this, you know, bathroom, both, length. We were so good we couldn't afford a TH. You know that you're considered a closeted Latina. And I said, really? <laughs> I haven't been keeping any secrets. First week, meeting a bunch of new people, and someone says to me, wow, your English is fantastic. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I grew up speaking English. You know, it's funny, people say to me, you don't look Cuban, and I said, I know, I just shaved my mustache and I have my sombrero in the car. I became aware that people were treated differently at a very early age. In my sophomore year, I was accused of plagiarism. And the nun said to me, I don't think you wrote this. I think, I think this is an Ernest Hemingway story. I went home and my mother goes, Niña, pídele perdón a las monjas. Ask for forgiveness to the nuns. And I go, what am I asking for forgiveness for? And I tell people, it's not that I probably speak with a Spanish accent. It's probably because you listen with one. I thank God I'm not a politician that all my old skeletons will come out and everybody will berate me and say what an idiot I am, because I was an idiot when I was a young woman. I made some really bad choices. I thank God that my job is the opposite of a politician. I tell the truth. I was never a child. I've been working since I was seven years old. Most people don't achieve things naturally, whatever that means. You're a natural writer, you're a natural actor, you're a natural lawyer. There's no such thing. All of these things have to be learned. That I can tap into my own experience, whether growing up as a Puerto Rican kid or as a gay kid, and understand what it means to be disenfranchised for different reasons. There were times where I felt do I belong here? I always had to fight rebellion within me, even if it was contrived and had to be riled up within me, that said, no, I belong here. That's what it has, this country. It teaches you how important it is to get involved with your community. Regardless the doubters, regardless the questions, regardless the criticism, none of that can be as overwhelming or as challenging as my mom's decision to uproot herself and come to America. I do think that my parents were able to see that American dream become a reality. All my success, I point towards, uh, towards my parents. 39 Rodriguez's during graduation, 50 Garcia's. I say, fantastic. Let them practice Garcia 50 times during graduation. I think that's awesome. If we're going to empower ourselves as Latinos, then we have to empower ourselves within. The self-pride and knowing, regardless of what this country tells you, in the negative images that you see everywhere, we had a big hand in making this country what it is. You know, the truth of the matter is, I'm many things like every one of us. I'm a son, I'm a brother, I'm a Democrat, I'm a Catholic, I'm a Texas Aggie, I'm a lot of things. But the most precious identity for me is as an American.